today on the Burning Archive. It is that time of year again, October, when the dignitaries in Oslo and Stockholm gather and award the Nobel Prizes, especially the one that matters most to us at the Burning Archive, the Nobel Prize for Literature. So this week on this Burning Archive, we're taking a bit of a interruption to plan programming to look ahead at the Nobel Prizes for literature, a little bit at peace, and a little bit at all those scientific ones for medicine, physics, chemistry, economics. Who will win the Nobel Prize for literature? Is the question for today for today's burning archive so yes it's going to be a slight change in plans for the burning archive over uh, the next month i've decided i would bring forward my planned episode on the nobel prize and rather than do a kind of a live stream um, uh, coverage of the announcement I do this sort of looking ahead episode that looks at the predictions and then in a month or so I'll do a wrap up episode of uh, the actual outcomes of the Nobel Prize for Literature for Peace and uh, those other ones and hopefully by that time I will have also read the at least some samples of the winners the actual winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. And so I'm also just uh, putting on hold for a few weeks my episodes on uh, Russian history. I'm still going to be working away on those and producing them. I'll be releasing them again from sort of mid mid-November early to mid-November but there's been some pretty dramatic events in the world over the last uh, week the uh, Nord Stream pipelines carrying gas from Russia to uh, Europe have been uh, damaged most likely almost certainly through a sabotage from a state actor and there's been a debate at the UN Security Council about around those events and so I think I'm just going to take a little bit of a pause on the discussion of uh, Russian history not that anything in what I have to say there is wrong or whatever but simply that people are getting a little bit heated in their assessments of different countries right now so i will pick that up again in early november and there will be some absolutely fantastically interesting episodes there'll be one around the 19th century around kind of tolstoy's war and peace and whether that is really a true gateway into 19th century russian history i'll look at Peter the Great and Catherine the Great, the time of troubles when the Romanov dynasty began, or from which the from which rubble the Romanov dynasty began, Ivan the Terrible, and then have a, a bit of a look back into a medieval history of the Russian world, even including Kiev and Rus. So that's that's the plan for the Russian episodes so I'm sorry to sort of uh, change the plan there but I hope that is okay with everyone okay so the Nobel Prize for Literature and last year I kind of started a bit of a tradition on the Burning Archive podcast of covering the Nobel Prize for Literature and it was episode 21 goodness me I was just a, you know a, a barely adult podcaster at that stage when I and it was when was that episode it was well it was October 2021 and on that episode I talked about the history of the prize who the favorite winners would be who were some of the most famous and best losers who uh, never uh, won the Nobel Prize for Literature including of course Lev Tolstoy perhaps the most famous 
great writer who did not win uh, the Nobel Prize and some of the contentious scandals. And as it was uh, last year, I also included sort of like the live announcement of the Nobel Prize and some of my reaction to that. And I was actually able to release that podcast within an hour or so of the Nobel Prize uh, news coming out. But I've, I think I'm going to take a different approach this year. I'm going to do this sort of prediction episode uh, around the Nobel Prize. And then in a month or so, while I just take a little bit of a, um, a short break uh, from the podcast while world events uh, settle, perhaps, and I have a brief little uh, creative rest, I will come back in early November with a podcast looking at the winner of this year's Nobel Prize, potentially both for literature and uh, some of the others, potentially for the Peace Prize. Uh, this time, we'll provide that podcast having read some of the winner's work, which I did not last year. And last year, uh, the winner was Abdul Razak Gurna, who was uh, like an emigre Tanzanian writer uh, based in, in uh, the United Kingdom or Britain. And I discovered just today, in fact, that uh, the Nobel Prize people have a kind of an outreach podcast called Nobel Conversations. And there's a terrific, uh, so you can get that on uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening to The Burning Archive on. It's called Nobel Conversations. And there's a really uh, interesting conversation with Abdul Razak Gurna. Uh, himself, uh, which provides some really great insight to his personality, his writing. That was last year's winner, and if and and, and as well as checking out that podcast with Abdul uh, Razak Gurna on, uh, which is called the yeah, Nobel Prize Conversations. The podcast is called Nobel Prize Conversations. So check that out. Uh, it's only uh, it's got conversations of heaps of the Nobel Prize winners across the disciplines, not just with uh, the Literature Prize winners. But so that's a great insight. And if you're interested in the history of the Nobel Prize for Literature, you could always go back and listen to episode 21 of the Burning Archive podcast, uh, my special episode on the Nobel Prize for Literature, where I uh, talked about some some of the interesting, fascinating parts of its rather controversial history. So the Nobel Prizes are going to be awarded next week, or from the 3rd of October. So, And the order they come out is the, on the 3rd of October, or the Monday, the Prize for Physiology or Medicine comes out. On the 4th of October, the Prize for Physics comes out. On the 5th of October, the Prize for Chemistry comes out. And drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. On the uh, 6th of October, Prize for Literature comes out at 1300 uh, Central European Standard Time, which is which is eight hours behind uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that will be at about 9 p.m. on Thursday evening this week. Uh, and so um, I'll be uh, recording my reaction to that uh, announcement on Thursday next week. And you will be able to hear my reaction Uh in a couple of weeks time, around about the 5th or 6th of November, when I release my wrap up podcast. Okay, so who is likely to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2022? I uh, forgot the two other prizes. So the Peace Prize comes out at uh, Friday or the 7th of on Friday the 7th of October and the Prize for Economic Sciences. Um, I don't know if, whether that's a typo on the um, Nobel Prize, but anyhow, the Prize for Economics is uh, on Monday uh, 10th of October, so the, fo the following week. 
Uh, and it's often quite interesting to see who is chosen for those ones. The Peace Prize obviously is often extremely uh, controversial and I'll comment on that a little bit later. Okay, so who is likely to win the prize? So let's have a look then at the betting odds. Now, of course, before I read out these betting odds, let me say uh, I do not encourage gambling on uh, literature prizes or really gambling of any uh, sort other than perhaps buying the occasional Tats Lotto ticket. But um, uh, so, but it's an interesting insight into uh, expectations, I guess, and uh, the mood. And, but it's often a quite unreliable one. Usually the favourites don't seem to win. But let's uh, share this information for what it's worth. So, top of the list, uh, most hot with the highest odds is uh, Michel Houlebecq the French writer. Uh, then there is Ngugi Wa Thiong, who is a Kenyan writer who apparently writes in his native uh, non-English language. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later because he's uh, commonly uh, identified as a prospective winner of the prize and there's a little profile of him I'll come to. Then we have Salman Rushdie, who seems to actually have among the shortest odds. Uh, it, it's a range, but it has some of the lowest odds of anyone. And I've got to say, I've got a gut feeling, you know, Salman Rushdie was attacked uh, recently. I mean, he's had that fatwa on him uh, for, gee, a long time. I don't know, 25, 30 years or whatever. And he was attacked recently. I'm, I'm not quite sure what his state of health is but I think it would be uh, a fitting honour perhaps to recognise Salman Rushdie. Then there is Annie Erno who's a French writer and Carson who I think is a Canadian writer maybe. Ga Gabriel Lutz, Pierre Michon who I think I've got a book. He writes funny little French um, sort of text. Haruki Murakami, who's one of those perennial favourites, who never, the Japanese novelist who often does not win. Margaret Atwood, a bit the same. Marisa Conde, she's a French sort of essayist. John Foss, who is a Norwegian novelist, I think. Stephen King, Jamaica Kincaid, Robert Coover, Helene Hsu, and then we're getting into lower odds, although the person after that is Ludmila Ulitskaya, who I think is maybe a, let me just check my notes here, uh, yes, uh, Ulitskaya is a Russian author who uh, I think has um, uh, partnered up with the former uh, oligarch Mikhail Khorovsky and is quite critical of um, the regime in Russia. So I wouldn't be surprised if the prize goes to her, although I think perhaps I would be a bit disappointed in the Nobel Prize Committee uh, getting involved in all of that. Um, Okay, so then we have, just to round this off, anyone else? I mean, there's a bunch of, there's a Peter Nadas, who's a famous Hungarian writer, Kanzu, who I think I mentioned last year as well, who's a famous Chinese writer. Perhaps they could be a candidate, um, you know, get it, keep away. I mean, it's been a bit Euro- I mean, we had an English Tanzanian writer last year. It's been pretty Euro in recent times, the uh, Nobel Prize. So uh, we could see a few things there. Hilary Mantel was on the list, but she died just last week. So I'm not sure that would be uh, likely. And then there are a few other famous names. So of those betting odds, I reckon probably Salman Rushdie might be uh, a bit of a favourite from the odds. Now let's also look at some of the literary predictions and over at Lit Hub, Literary Hub, which is like 
well, what it is, it's a literary hub for news about literature on the internet. There is an article by Labanya Krishnan and Sandeep Bethan Apotla, which is talking about 12 authors who have a shot. So let's just go through each of those. They actually uh, make the comment that I sort of just made, that if you look at the stats, and I'm quoting here, if you look at the stats on Nobel winners the past few years, four out of the last six winners write in English, and the remaining non-English writers are European. So... I do think that um, if I were the Nobel Prize Academy, I would probably try to fix that and also keep out of the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. Let's see if they do so. Okay, so there are several people here who I will just mention uh, briefly. Adonis is a Syrian poet and the authors of LitHub say he should have won, should have, yes, he should have won by now, seen as equivalent in status to T.S. Eliot, but they don't fancy his odds because he's an Arab. There's clearly a view from LitHub that the Nobel Prize has a few uh, unconscious bias problems. Ngugi Awathiango, uh, apologies, if I haven't uh, pronounced that name correctly, but that is the Kenyan writer I mentioned before who's been prominent up there for some time and he, a, a, a prominent as a predicted uh, winner for some time. And he writes in his native Gikuyu instead of in English uh, and his mission is to equalise power relations between languages and decolonise the literary landscape. Wizard of the Crow is one of his um, um, most prominent books. Then we have um, Edwidge Dantecat, who is an American. And then there is Gabriel Lutz, who is another American, who has written apparently an essay, The Sentence is a lonely place and this is easily some of the best English writing since Patrick White who won the Nobel Prize in 1973 so that perhaps doesn't say much for the, I think these people don't like the English writers <laughs> who've won the Nobel Prize terribly much good old Patrick White the one and only Australian to win the Nobel Prize and of course Les Murray's untimely death took him off the uh, favourite list where he had been for many years, uh, the great Australian poet Les Murray. Then we have John Foss, who is a uh, Norwegian writer, apparently the teacher of uh, Norsegard, who writes those incredibly detailed sort of accounts of his own uh, life and struggle, uh, uh, very sort of mm, kind of realistic uh, accounts. Then there's an Iranian novelist, Shanush Pasipur, who these people recommend their book, Tuba in the Morning of Night. And then there is a Hungarian writer, Laszlo Krasnohokai, who I'm pretty sure I might have mentioned in the show last time. But it sounds like he's quite a challenging writer to comprehend. Annie Erno is a French writer. I think she was in the list there. Uh, she writes autofiction. Anne Carson is the Canadian writer, uh, an author, a uh, poet, I think, maybe. Scholastic Mukasonga is, is a French Rwandan writer. And they note no black woman from Africa has ever won this prize. Um, so she is highly regarded. Marisa Conde is, uh, it says here, a legend of Caribbean literature. Again, I feel I might have mentioned her um, previously. And apparently in 20, 2018, when the Nobel Prize for Literature was suspended due to, you know, kind of a sex scandal amongst the 
uh, members of the Nobel Prize Committee in that year, uh, which when ultimately Olga Tokasu uh, was awarded the prize. Um, and I think I covered that uh, scandal briefly in my episode back, episode 21 from October last year, uh, a special episode on the Nobel Prize. Apparently, Marisa Conde was awarded the alternate Nobel back in 2018. So she might well be a, a likely candidate. And then we have Salim Burakat, who is a Kurdish Syrian writer who lives in Sweden, but has only one book of poetry translated into English. And then there are a few others. Uh, they mentioned a Korean writer, like the novelist Hwang sok Yong and uh, Mechaya Katarescu Bur. Bubaka Boris Diop, Cesar Ayara, and Ismail Kadare. So that is the uh, that's the list. And I can say that unfortunately I have not read a single one of those people on the list. But it's a wonderful list, and I think I'm going to follow up at least a couple of those. Some of them sound like it might be a bit hard and obscure to get. Uh, but in any case, that is the possibilities uh, before us. Part of me has this sort of feeling that the Nobel Prize get might get swept up in the whole political situation around uh, Russia and Europe, uh, but I think that would be unfortunate. And th there are some compelling cases made in that little list that I read from uh, at lithub.com that suggest a few alternative candidates. We shall find out on the evening, 6th of October, in the evening Australian time, that is, of course. Part of me also kind of thinks, well, maybe, maybe they should award it to an historian. There have been a couple of historians uh, that have won, but not for a long time and perhaps they could even award it to the great historian Dominic Levin who uh, has just published a fabulous book called In the Shadow of Gods I think uh, which is looks at emperors through history the actual role of emperors in history what an impossible job that is and of course whose book Russia Against Napoleon will feature in my episode on uh, Russia in the 19th century when I get to when I re release that in early November. Okay so we've heard what the odds are, um, we've heard the uh, predictions from some slightly uh, dyspeptic people on LitHub who are, are picking up a few biases in the Nobel Committee. I guess you know they might switch that around, but they may well just repeat the biases. Um, I do wonder whether we'll see uh, Ludmila Ulsaya, especially with the backing of a uh, billionaire and not very nice. Oligarch Mikhail Horovsky back in her candidacy. We may well see that happening. I hope that the Nobel uh, maybe fixes some of its uh, biases towards English and European and chooses some of those great candidates from the Lit Hub list. Either that or honours uh, Salman Rushdie who has, as well as having contributed so much to literature over the years, has also in a way been, I don't know, maybe a martyr even for the sake of good writing, having uh, been uh, subject to a fat laugh for so many years. Okay, so that's the Nobel Prize for Literature. I'm not going to make a prediction except to say those two things, Salman Rushdie Ludmilla or Skaya, I wouldn't be surprised. Or uh, maybe I think also the, in addition to those um, highly esteemed candidates from that list on the, on the Lit Hub, Kan Zhu, the uh, Chinese writer, I think may well also be a candidate. 
even maybe Haruki Murakami might finally, finally break through. Briefly on the other prizes there, I've discovered there are also prediction markets or uh, speculation, particularly in the scientific journals, on the other prizes. But it's all pretty, um, it doesn't really mean anything to me. And then with the Nobel uh, Peace Prize, uh, there are, of course, some interesting, there's some interesting speculation about that. In particular, there was some controversy this year because... Well, obviously, the Ukraine war happened, and in March, in the month after that, dozens, it says here in this article, dozens of European lawmakers appealed to the Nobel Foundation, asking for the Peace Prize deadline to be extended so that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and the Ukrainian people could be nominated. Perhaps they should have checked whether Volodymyr Zelensky was abiding by the Minsk peace agreements. But anyhow, I won't get into that, but there were politicians from Germany, UK, Sweden, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovakia, Estonia and the Netherlands who uh, urged for uh, a change in procedure. So I think there's going to be a hell, there's going to be a hell of a lot of diplomatic pressure on the uh, committee the Norwegian Nobel uh, Prize Committee because the, it's the Norwegian Committee that awards the Peace Prize um, to to award it to uh, someone associated with Ukraine but I feel that would not really go well with uh, the rest of the world outside the sort of Atlantic Alliance and uh, as it happens I picked up from the local library this week a book by uh, Uni Turatini uh, called Betraying the Noble The Secrets and Corruption Behind the Nobel Peace Prize published in 2020 and it in fact carries a foreword by Professor Michael Nobel uh, who has been vice chairman and chairman for 15 years of the Nobel Family uh, Society and so I guess represents the uh, I guess the will and testament of the Nobel Prize uh, Committee and in that uh, foreword he writes that the Norwegian Nobel Committee has often selected candidates for the Peace Prize who were well known to the general public and mass media and therefore liable to invite critical comments and reactions. Uh, The Norwegian Nobel Committee has also expanded the concept of peace to include categories which to the critical observer have little or nothing to do with the original conditions of Alfred Nobel's will and intentions. And they also appear to have done very sketchy investigations into the qualifications of some of the selected candidates. He says that the book, Betraying the Nobel points out and describes in detail such fallacies in past selections, showing that the choices often appear based upon political and national considerations of Norway, since all committee members except one recently appointed continue to be selected among former representatives of the main political parties in Norway. So that is quite a verdict on the Nobel Peace Prize. We will withhold judgment, I guess, until we see the winner of 2022. And, And I will comment on the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in my episode, in which will be released in early November, as well as commenting on uh, both the winner of the Nobel Literature Prize and hopefully my own uh, reactions to some of the writing of that winner of the Nobel uh, Literature Prize.
So just to repeat for all the listeners who may not have picked it up uh, earlier, the Nobel Prizes are being announced from Monday the 3rd of October through to Monday the 10th of October. And the two big ones, at least in my world, are on the Thursday the 6th of October, that's the Literature Prize, and the 7th of October, that is the Peace Prize. You can actually watch the Nobel Prize announcements uh, live on YouTube or I guess other kind of streaming platforms, but they have a YouTube channel, uh, the Nobel Prize people have a new uh, a um, YouTube channel, uh, so you can watch that, so do check it out, and do check out the podcast Nobel Prize Conversations, uh, and in particular the excellent conversation with Abdul Razak Gurna, the winner of last year's Nobel Prize uh, for Literature. I, in the next hour, am going to be ordering one of Abdul Raza, Razak Gurner's books online, and my pledge to you is in my episode in early November, I will be feeding back some of my responses to uh, this highly esteemed Tanzanian slash English novelist. Okay, so that's the program for today. Um, you're just a reminder, especially to regular listeners, I'm just going to have a, a brief little break from releasing uh, podcasts over the next few weeks. I'll still be producing some of my content, but I'm just going to hold them back from uh, the somewhat heated airwaves um, until things maybe settle uh, with the international situation. But the plan will be I will be resuming my backwards history of Russia uh, with the next episode being about 19th century Russia in early to mid November. So until then, do share the podcast with others. I promise you I'll be back. Uh, it's only a short little, you know, it's basically a month. I'll, I'll, I'll just have a little release break for a month and I will hopefully be able to bring you some great and interesting news about fresh directions for the Burning Archive podcast and my writing as well when I am back in early November covering the outcomes of the Nobel Prize Committee announcements this week. So until then, do remember, as Ezra Pound said in Canto 81, what thou lovest well will not be reft from thee. Bye now. Thank you.